to the grave. Director's cut starting off with warning shot. Hello? I'm going to turn it up. That might be risky. <laughs> Love that squishy voice of his. When opening tracks are real tracks. Holy shit, dude. God damn. Red Dot Sight, we heard this one. What a voice, man. I gotta get Dane on a Sunscare track. Ooh, yeah, the course was sick. Dude, the memes in this too. <laughs> Duality of man. Dude, and the synths in the back, they're so nice. I still feel like this is probably like the best single. The cut off the head was also insane. And acts of kindness.
Good shit, dude. They're so gutted. So I think this one, this one's a new one. I'm gonna try and dry swallow some pain reliever. I got a headache. Got it. Nice bounce there. This one's a little more straightforward. More core than the others. What is up? Late night stream. Just dropped today. Or, or the actual album drops on streaming services like at midnight wherever you are. But the videos were dropped three hours ago. Ooh, double scrape. Yeah, new to fame is great. Lots of good music this week. <laughs> oh! This is Carrick Angren! Jump scare. Yeah, I love the symphonics. That reminds me of hundred percent Carrick Angren. Came out of nowhere. Really? That's how they end it? That's hilarious. Dude, that's a good track. This is BDTS. What that means, uh, I don't know the lyrics here. BDTS. Uh, burn it down? No, burn down the system. I think it's burn down the system. Okay. Left to suffer jump scare. Oh, 
Juicy man. Unreal. Unreal. That's slam. Let's fucking slam, dude. Unreal, man. It's unreal. Love his voice. So silky and smooth. Protest and Sever featuring Sam Crocker. Uh, I think that's the guy from Fairly Odd Parent. From Antagonist AD from New Zealand. Ooh, smooth. Nice, dude. They've been killing with the ambience. That's so nice. I hear Karak Anger and maybe a little Demu Borgia. It's interesting. Very subtle. Ooh, Crocker jump scare. Oh.
Love that. Smooth transition out of it, too. Dude, they're, they're killing these programs with synths and symphonics. They're so good. Sounds like uh, echoes from the 17th century from Karak Angren. Oh my god. <laughs> These are phenomenal. What's next? What's next? Manhunt. Clean, man. Best highs in the game. Black people did this. There's some soul in that. 
Oh, yeehaw! Nice. We're getting a nice variety of influences on this. I, I really do appreciate that. Found footage, this is the new video. That's it, that's the found footage. You found it. Did someone say feet? Hate that joke. Foot? Okay, so they're at a slaughterhouse trying to get, uh, I guess, video of animal abuses. Produced by tens of swords. Cradle of Phil stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there it is. Shotgun long range. Oh shit. <laughs> Was that, what was that? Could that video have been about misdirected activism? Perhaps it seemed to be like a, a small individually owned farm, not to say abuses don't happen there, but I feel like a lot of animal rights abuses are more systemic.
Oh, I should have put the acts of kindness video here. Not bad. This one is just like kind of straight up heavy. hits every time. I miss this song. It's been a while since I listened to it. I need to hear that chorus again. Peak. Some breeze. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, that was like probably second boost, or oh, I don't know. There are so many, all the singles are great. This is reversing the bear trap featuring Jess. Christensen? I don't know who she is. Ooh, Jesse Christensen. More Carrick Angren. More Carrick Angren. But I, I think Jesse Christensen is a guitarist. Ooh. 
Okay, Jesse Christensen has bled out. That's gorgeous. Symphonic Slam, dude. That's death grind. That's like some shit aborted would do. one man <laughs> oh is that a reference to saw where they had like the bear trap that like fucking split someone's face open it could be that's my take and this was like the the latest single we heard like they mastered the choruses on this. It's so emotional too. I love this dude.
Into our foreskin. That's what he said. I am utterly filled with glee. How joyous. Dude, the choruses have been phenomenal. This is the... this is the last one. Cut off... No, no, okay. <laughs> Still the ending of Cut Off the Head, but now we're on the last one. Die, comma, rise. An eight and a half minute track. Maybe a reference to Black Ops? Even their like softer parts and their lead-ins have been like phenomenal. I don't know where this is going. I like where it went. <laughs> Transition, you got the groove, ambience keeps going, smart. They're killing the choruses, man. They're so fucking good. Watch me. Really embracing black metal. This is also very aborted. 
Right into the, sl the slams are fantastic too. Lots of influences here. That's more of a death metal solo. But I think the progression is something you'd see in black metal. I guess that makes it a black metal solo. I feel like I, I had a contradiction there. This song is gorgeous. This is so fucking black metal. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> I have so much to say about this album. They fucking turned into Lorna. <laughs> I mean that, I mean that very jokingly. Yeah, that's how you end that fucking album. That's how you end that album. That is such good shit, dude. I feel like the black metal influence, I feel like, you know, I've been picking up on it, you know, uh, on some of the singles, you know, like, uh, I guess Red Dot Side had a little, uh, Cut Off the Head uh, had a bit, Acts of Kindness. Like, we've been hearing a lot of it uh, very subtly, uh, more subtly than some other bands have done. Like, Distance's latest album had very explicit uh, black metal uh, influences. This one was cool because it had... These black metal influences felt uh, like they're, you know, more second 
or third generation black metal. I feel like the most prominent influence that stood out to me was Carrick Angren. Whether or not they invented their symphonics were very, very close. And we got some black metal riffing at times. It was fucking sick, but it was still so much to the grave. Like they really made it their own. And I feel like, you know, I've been saying this again and again and again with all the new newest black metal or black and deathcore releases. Like all these bands are making this sound their own. I was really worried that like post Lorna Shore, it would be over uh, the genre would be oversaturated with a lot of the same sound. Uh, but what I had always really wanted to see was the second, third, fourth, later generation black metal influence sort of permeate the deathcore scene and perhaps other metal subgenres. I feel like we're seeing that here, right? Because Cradle of Filth, that's definitely like second, third gen. Probably, probably more so second, but they've changed their sound over their career, of course. At Carrick Angren, that's like, they started in like, what, 2010, 2011? So that's like the modern era of, of black metal. And hearing some of those, like, uh, those style symphonics off of their... It sounded like the symphonics here sounded like symphonics from uh, the Carrick Angren album Lamendam, which I believe is their first album. It's just, it, it's really phenomenal to hear this. Like, we're hearing so many diverse black and deathcore... <laughs> black and deathcore bands it's it's phenomenal like of sulfur has their own very specialized sound that takes a lot of influence from cradle of filth uh defamed has a lot of uh, black metal influence that comes from i don't fucking know video games but it sounds they sound like they sound like forest spirits but like evil i love that stuff uh who else there's a new mental cruelty I haven't heard that yet so i'm excited to hear uh what that sounds like who else is doing black and uh, deathcore? Distant recently did on their album, combined it with their sound, and it was fucking sick. Uh, they had a bit more of a traditional influence on their album, though. Distant sound, like beatdown. Have you ever heard of blackened beat uh, or blackened down tempo deathcore? That's entirely novel to Distant. So the combination was novel in the Distant scenario. Uh, so there is there is a lot of opportunity uh, opportunity here. I'm very excited. I feel like I have yet to hear. Uh, black and deathcore bands that sound the same as another black and deathcore band. Disembodied Tyrant, another example, like a more black and infant annihilator. You know, I feel like this is this is like the start of like a new age for deathcore. Like this is really, really exciting. Like phenomenal, phenomenal job done by the the To the Grave crew. I feel like they were just on it with their choruses, you know, their riffs, you know, to the grave. They've always been super groovy. They've had like the brutal end always laid down. You know, they've had a few choruses, but I feel like their choruses just ascended here, especially with the symphonics. Like that was that was that was be beautiful. Let's let's go into the rankings. You know, going through the album, I was like, you know, maybe Distant did it better. I feel like Distant had a little bit more uh diversity. But I don't know, with that closer track towards the end, I feel like each song brings something completely new. Full sequence was nice because it just completely switched into a different song towards the end. That was like that was sick. I feel like this was super experimental which is exactly what we need. I know a lot of people, I, I think I said this in the Defame video, but a lot of people are calling for, oh, oh, Deathcore or Metal. Metal needs to pull influence from all these bands outside outside the genre. I don't think we're at that point yet because we have metal bands that haven't, e or we have uh, subgenres in metal that haven't even pulled from other subgenres in metal yet. There's a lot of potential within metal to, to, to sort of genre blend without even dipping from outside uh, outside genres. Not to say there's anything wrong with it, but it is a really missed opportunity, especially because, you know, metal, it's it's like, it, it, it's the it's the genre of, like, the underdog. Like, you know, you know what people say? It, it, they're, the people will always say, oh, yeah, I listen, I listen to all, all, all music, except for country and metal. That's always, I've heard that so many times. I bet you have too. And I just feel like, you know, why, why, why appease, why appease those people? Like, you know, I, someone can. I just don't think it's particularly, uh, like, it, it's not all that revolutionary because you just take, like, the two most, like, you have to, like, make metal more mild to appeal to those people. So it's like, uh, you kind of dilute, uh, you know, what it is at its core, that sort of abrasiveness. I love it, but I'm, I'm a grindcore guy through and through. But, yeah, I feel like there's just so much to pull from metal itself that, like, people are kind of sleeping on. People are skipping to pulling from outside genres, but, like, Black and Deathcore, there's a lot of opportunity there. From Black and Deathcore, Gothic Deathcore, like, there's, there's, there's so much potential I feel like people aren't aware of. Because metal has such a rich, rich history. But To the Grave, they just added, they just added to that history and really cemented themselves in it. That was a phenomenal, phenomenal album. I'm just I'm just excited for their career, man. Like they've just been destroying it. I love I love their messaging. I love their messaging. I, f I feel like not enough people talk about animal rights. A lot of people um, who advocate for animal rights are vil are vilified. Uh, it's just yeah, I feel like they represent 
um, the complexities of animal rights like very, very well, uh, just in terms of like, I don't know. For me, that video of found footage felt like it represented, and this is this is of course my interpretation, like uh, like this group of teenage or this group of activists targeting just like the wrong person, when ultimately like a lot of like uh, the American meat consumption is like really driven by not not like the farm level, but rather the corporate level. So it's like where do you take your protest to, uh, which is something to think about. There is no right or wrong answer. But it's like, yeah, like the, these songs, these videos, they get you thinking. And I, I really do appreciate that. It, it, it's like, it's a theme that I feel like, you know, metal, who else engages in these themes? Cattle decapitation? Notoriously so. But like, other than that, you know, a lot of, a lot of metals, a lot of angst, suffering, pain, agony, uh, the human condition, human nature. It's, it's, it's nice to, to see something refreshing, though all of those subjects are always interesting to explore. I feel like, you know, just because of the thematic ties, like, To the Grave should absolutely tour with Cattle Decapitation. They should just do some, some vegan tour, find another vegan band, or not a vegan band. Actually, To the Grave might be vegan, but another band that, like, advocates for animal rights. Just do a whole lineup. It'd be sick. It'd be sick. But, man, I'm curious to hear what you guys on YouTube think of this track. It's, or not this track. Jeez, I'm, I'm delirious. This album. Uh, for me, I haven't ranked it yet. I think I'm going to put it ahead of Distant, but it's not... It's not by a lot, because Distant was fucking sick. Each have their pros and cons. I feel like this appealed to more of my black metal interests. Uh, but it was more mild in terms of that, too. I feel like they blended the genre super, like, smoothly here. Uh, which was really... That's, that's, like, not... It's not easy. It's not easy. But damn. God damn. That was some, that was some good shit. 